each other. It's the perfect environment. And so then when I when I messaged you, it was like 5 a.m. in the morning here. And I messaged you and I told you, look, I'm, 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 I have to get into startups. So what I did, I just searched for startups on Google in Lisbon. And I read every single article I could find. And then I just contacted them. I sent them emails and I was like, look, this is what I do. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to Bali. So what I'm planning to do is get better myself. But I could offer help via Skype, via, you know, screen share, whatever you guys need. And... Um, and I contacted every single company that was working with startups. So I just messaged them. And I was like, look, I'm in this position and I don't know about any forums or I don't know about anything in Lisbon. Could you help me get into forums and into the scene? All right. So probably most 80% people, didn't answer. Most people just wouldn't make that contact. Did you ever struggle with that problem? Like most people would just be like, oh, I'm not going to email these guys and bother them or feel self-conscious about it. Like, how are you able to just do that? Well, but who else should I contact? Well, every, everyone knows. Like, if I was in that situation, I'd be like, yeah, I should contact those guys, but I feel stupid right. doing it or self-conscious about it. I, I don't understand that. <laughs> I, I don't get it, because if you don't do it, you don't get shit going. Right, that's so you just, most people you don't just get have shit to going. Do it. Yeah. How? What? Most people don't get shit going, you know? They just don't do right, it. Right, right. Yeah, so the, so here's the thing. What I started to understand months ago, since I'm working with you, actually, is that there, the, the problem is usually very easy. The solution is very often very easy, too. Not the perfect solution. The perfect solution is pretty hard to get. Right. But a solution is pretty easy to get. Right. So... The, the problem is I don't know anyone. The easy solution is contact a lot of people and maybe I'll get to know someone. Right. <laughs> is it the best solution to just message everybody and say, look, I'm a fish. I don't know anything about what you're doing, but I want to get into it. Probably not. You could probably find a better way to do it. But I just thought, man, if I just contact. So, for example, what I did is I contacted every single person I knew in Lisbon. Mm-hmm. I contacted all my family that was there and I told them, look, this is what I want to do. If you know anyone that is looking for uh, help or has a company, don't ask them if they need my help. Don't, don't, don't ask them that. <laughs> just, just tell me if they're having a startup and I will talk to them. And then I contacted old students from you know, my poker staking. I contacted every single person and said, look, this is what I'm doing. What are you doing? And yeah, then all of a sudden they were like, man, I have a friend. He's doing this and that. And he's starting his, like he's having a startup now. And yeah, then I got in touch with him. I was like, what do you guys do? And I realized immediately the problems they had. And I was like, look, next week, Monday, we'll get on a Skype call. Hmm. They're like, yeah. Cool. So what did you say to them? How did you just, like pitch your skills? Because I think most people would feel self-conscious. Like, what do they say? Not know what to say. I, I, yeah, so what if you... Okay, so one thing that I could tell you that you should also do, Daryl, okay. is... Don't talk about yourself. Right. Just listen. Just tell them, look, I don't have any any idea about how the things go where you are right now. So just tell me about your idea. What are you guys up to? And I'll see, you know, if we if if I can help you or if we can help each other. And then so the, the guy just told me, you know, what he's doing, what his idea is, and so on. And then basically in the end, I just said, would you mind if I think about your problems for the next two days for free? And then on Monday, we'll get together and we share ideas. Hmm. That's it. Who will say no? <coughs> Who will say no? Free. Like, I don't want a person to think for two days straight about my problems. For free. Yeah. Who will say no? Right. And so I think you just have to come up with very stupid questions. I don't know. Did I tell you the my best friend who is like a pickup artist? No. What, what he does? No. He very often goes to girls and he, he's like, sorry, but do you mind if I tell you that you're amazingly looking or whatever you say, name it in English? And, you know, like, do, would you mind if I tell you that you look amazing? And, like, you know, who, like, which woman in the world say, yeah, I mind it, actually. 
<laughs> and, and if she does, he told me that some actually do, you know, because they're idiots or they have a bad day or whatever. And then he's just like, yeah, okay, I'm sorry then, but you really look amazing. And then he just turns and, and goes. And he says, 50% of the time, they call him back and they apologize. They're like, sorry, I'm having a bad day. You know, well, I don't know, my friend broke up. Or whatever. <laughs> 50% yeah, of the time, it works all the time. Yeah, it works, yeah, it works. It's, it's weird. But an- it makes sense. Anchorman quote. Do you, Anchorman, tell me. You ever, you ever seen the movie Anchorman? I, I, I didn't like it, but I heard that the German version is terrible and the American is amazing. Yeah, the American version is amazing. Okay, well, what did he say? <laughs> so he has this cologne called like Sex Panther or something. Okay. And it just, uh, it's terrible. Like the guy like, spells it. I was like, oh, this smells like gasoline. And then um, Will Ferrell and just, you know, his funny, kind of like hilarious voice is just like, studies show that 60% of the time it works all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that actually. I didn't know it was an anchor man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really good. Yeah, it's really good. So you have a meeting with one of these guys. All three. Three people. Yes. Are they people, three different same. companies, or just three people on the same? No, no, same, same. No, and I have uh, another one where I'm not sure if I'm going to have the meeting yet uh, next week, but we'll see. I'm in touch. Um, I told him what I can do, and um, yeah, he'll get back to me this weekend. So, so what are the problems? Know for a while. Huh? What is their problem? The people you're meeting with. So, um, yeah, I, I can I can tell you, Peter. You know Peter Thiel, right? Yeah. The PayPal guy. If you can't like and answer this on record, that's fine. I don't know. I, I don't care. Um, so basically, um, I read his book again. I'm right now reading it again, zero to one. Okay. And he said something very cool. He said, the, what was it called? The software bubble? You know, where all the companies grew out of nothing and the tech bubble raised like a lot 2001. of money. The tech bubble, yeah. Yep. Exactly, the tech bubble. He said that um, what companies in Silicon Valley knew I learned after the tech bubble was, and then he named four things. And one of the things was that the product quality is the most important thing. Okay? Mm-hmm. Nothing is more important than the, quali- party, uh, the product quality. And then he said, all those four things are wrong. <laughs> and they're proven to be wrong. Sales is as important or even more important than the product quality. If you have a shitty product, you cannot sell it. But if no one knows about it, you cannot sell it either. So then basically what I said is, um, what do you think about getting known first, like producing, giving a lot of value to other companies? And if they ask you, you know, but what do you produce? Nothing. I'm right now building something, but I don't want to talk about it because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a person of, I'm a doer. I'm not a talker, right? Mm-hmm. Something like that. Something cheesy like that. And so... The problem that people do is, that people have is they produce for a year, they don't talk to people, no one knows about it, and and seriously, every single person that I talked to in the last few days has the exact same problem. They're, they're building a product for two years, they raise some money, and then they go broke right away. Mm. And <laughs> I find it funny because it's so obvious that when people know you, and they know, like, Daryl Jace, he can help you. Is he, some, is he producing something? I don't know, but he can help you. He does it for free. I don't know why he does it. I don't know why Daryl Jace helps for free, but he does it. So he can really help me. Yes, he can help you. Okay. Then they get in contact with you. Daryl, are you producing something? Because I would like to give something back. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm right now building something, but I'm not producing it now. Okay. You know? And then at some point, and Gary Vee says, he got asked, how do you sell something? And he said, I make people guilty for buying. Like, I, pr- I give them so much value that they feel so guilty when I produce something that they have to buy it, even without me asking. Hmm. And I just thought, man, that's so obvious. It's so smart. It's so obvious. And also, you know what the great thing about this is? I told the guy, man, if I would invest in your company right now and I would give you money to invest in your company, do you know what I would pay you for? I would pay you for... Going outside, meeting people, and inviting them for a for a coffee or a beer or whatever. 
Mm-hmm. Every single day, you should not do anything else but, you know, meet people, have fun, and drink some beers with them. Every single day. Right. And it's fun. Right. So, yeah. is that what this guy's problem is, or this company? Yes. Yes. Hmm. But that's the problem of every single company, I think, at the beginning especially. Right. So, did you tell them that? Yes. Of course. Right. Right away. Straight. Hmm. Okay, so you did like pitch some like ideas and all that. Yeah, I, but right right away I gave them I gave them everything single idea I had. I'm not I'm not hiding. Right. Like if I if I don't have anything like if I talk to you for an hour and I don't have anything to tell you after that hour that you could get pro, uh, value from, then I have to get better. Right. So that's amazing. So I love you, that. If you've already told them that, what are you gonna tell them when you talk to them on Monday? I'm gonna tell them exactly what, the, like how they should do it. Okay. Show show them how it should be done, and what I'm going to do is make clear that I'm gonna be there every single time they need me because they are going to. What do you say? How do you call that? Like slack off? Like no? Like how do you call it? Uh, not do anything. You know, after like three four days, they lose motivation, mm-hmm. and you know, I'm gonna remind them of their own past. I don't even know them, but. If you tell someone, do you know that feeling of you have something to do for school and you wait till the last day right. until you do it? Right. Everybody knows that, right? Right. <laughs> you can tell this to anyone. Everyone's like, yeah, ha, 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 I know that. I never even and, went to school and I know that. So. Yeah, it's, it's everybody. Everybody knows that. And so, yeah, I tell them exactly the same. And I will be there to remind, remind them of what has to be done. Mm. Yeah. And this is where they get the most value. And obviously, keeping things organized that they don't want to focus on. Like, these guys are great at what they do. They produce, like, they make a product, and the product will be great. Mm -hmm. So what they need to understand is that there are other things that have to be done, and how to make them so easy. And, you know, actually, you need to want to do it. You You need to want to meet people, you know. And how to do that is so complicated because, like you said, you know, people... They don't want to contact someone they don't know. But what if you are in a party and someone is drinking a beer and you're like, hey, man, cheers. My name is Daryl. What's your name? My name is Pedro. Okay, what do you do? This. Easy. Right. You know, but picking up a fucking phone and calling someone you've never met, hey, man, I want to sell you something. That's not so easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you have to do any planning to figure out what they should do, or you already have the answers to that question? Um, I What I did today, I uh, wrote down a lot of just random ideas on what they could say. Mm. Okay, so that I have, like, a, whatever they say, something very close will be on that map, basically, on that paper, and I will just keep brainstorming about it. I did it for three hours, roughly. And um, I just came up with all things that could come up, whatever they could say, and um, and then just go with that. Because there could be so many different things. that pe- I mean, you do the lifestyle business, right? Lifestyle coaching thing now. I mean, there. what do you, What would you say? Like, there are a lot of different things you didn't come up with even, right? Mm-hmm. Right. <clears throat> like, all those people have. Right. I mean, it's it changes so much. It's like, conversation usually starts at one point and then goes to completely other direction yeah, yeah totally absolutely I find and I don't like, even know I find like people don't really know what they want or what they need and figuring out yes, <laughs> yes absolutely I was just reading a message from my buddy okay and, yeah he's he just messaged me I'm fucking getting into this hack reactor it's this uh, it's what? It, hack reactor is like this uh coding academy they're giving away 1.3 million in scholarships okay and okay. He, he messaged me about uh getting some like training to so you have to put in your application he wants help doing that and okay. all that and then he just messaged me today i'm fucking getting in just randomly <laughs> nice it's so cool when when people get shit done it's so awesome it's so simple when when you when you look at it, uh, how do you say it backwards? Right, like when you when you see the result now and you look backwards and you're like, okay, how did you do it? How did you get there? Yeah. 
how did you get there? Yeah, and it's so tough when you're sitting there and you're like, I know where I want to get to, but I don't know how to get there. And most of the time, it's so obvious. It's so crazy. I love it so much. I think um, the problem with guys like me or, or like you um, well, I guess you don't have a fucking problem <laughs> because you just do shit. I do. I do have a lot of problems, man. It's just thinking. Yeah, is, thinking is so addicting. Like you mm -hmm. can just sit there and you think, and you could constantly feel like you're getting closer and closer to like a better answer, and you think that's that's the way to be smart. That's the way to be successful, <laughs> quote unquote. Right. But it's it turns out that it's just not. <laughs> The like, way to be successful is like you do some thinking, and then you go yeah. out and do shit, and then you reevaluate from there. But I I I kind of disagree on that actually. I do think, for example, that you would love to do what I what I want to do. Like I want to get into companies or or build teams, right? And every single team has different problems. Every single person is different. Every single Company product is different. Right. So, and what you do the whole day is just solve problems for these people so that they can do best what they're best in. Right. And every single, like, think about Seth Godin. I mean, I love Seth Godin. He says he's in the best job ever. He is getting paid for thinking 10 hours a day. He's basically doing exactly what you're describing. Thinking for 10 hours a day and then writing a blog post about it, coming back to the company and saying, look, guys, this is what we're going to do. And then these guys just do it because they know, you know, Seth Godin has done it for so many years. He, we can trust him, right? We right. can trust him. If he says this is, this is the path, we're just going to do it. And, you know, if he decides that we have to take a different path, then we're going to take a different path. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, there's. The way I mean is there's nothing wrong with the thing. It's just like when you constantly want like that certainty and you constantly like go for that before you take an action. Like you said. Yeah, go ahead. It's like you said, like how you, you the way you're approaching it is probably not the best solution. You know, but yeah. it's a solution. And there's this hang-up, there's this feeling where you just want to get as close to the solution as possible by thinking about it. To the best solution, you mean? Or? Yeah, to the best solution, by thinking about mm. it. And you don't want to take action until you you feel like you've got there, like, aha, like, eureka, you know what I mean? And yeah, exactly. You yeah. just never fucking get there. And even if you did, I don't even know if you'd know it exactly, you know? Exactly, yeah, that, that's exactly it. When do you know that it's the absolute best solution? Because things change so much that, I mean, it's unbelievable. Like, just think about it. I mean, we talked about it, this a lot. When you think back one year, how different you were, how different you thought, how worse of a human being you were. I mean, I don't know if you want to say that, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It's, it's, just, it's just incredible what you can do. And if you build your world around you, and this is what I think you want to do and what I definitely want to do, if you build your world around you in a way that it leaves you alone when the only thing you want to do is think and you get paid for that, yeah. this, that would make me, that, that, no, wait a second, that will make me so happy and it makes me so happy right now to even think that this is actually going to happen because it is, it is going to happen. And, uh, I don't know. And even when someone, like, seriously, I contacted so many people, over 90% didn't message me back yet. I mean, this is only two or three days in, but right. just saying, I saw, your, I saw your email, I don't have the time right now, I'll just message later, or something like that, which one or two people did, actually. Perfectly fine with me, you know, at least I know that there's something coming back, but there are so many companies that didn't even answer. Right. It's... Yeah, but it's okay because I'm so happy because actually, you know, three people did answer, so it's awesome. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. So you got the talk on Monday. You were just yeah. how much time you're gonna spend preparing? Because you're you're like trying to like think about every possible outcome of things they might say. What else are you gonna do? Yeah, maybe I explained it in a, in, a, in a bad way. I'm not preparing for that talk. Mm -hmm. I'm preparing for every single talk that will come up in the next months. So I'm not doing this 
thought pr this this bra brainstorming just to get prepared for that talk. Mm -hmm. I want to be prepared if someone calls me on Tuesday. This brainstorming that I did now will help me on Tuesday too. Mm -hmm. So whatever comes up, I'll just write it down on that on that list basically. And I'll be like, oh okay, I didn't even think about that idea. So I'll just write it down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to be really like I want to become really 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 good uh, in front of people. And when I talk to one person to a hundred people, I don't I don't care. I want to be very very good at. So for example, I'm. I'm going to make a video, I don't know if it's going to be today or tomorrow, but one of these two days. Then I'm going to make a video about how important communicating your idea is. So what I want to be really good at, and the people that I want to hire in the future are people that are happy and that can communicate happiness. Right. You know, it's, it's not only that you are happy, it's okay. I mean, I'm happy for you if you're happy. <laughs> if you cannot communicate to someone why you're being happy and how you can be happy, happy too, that's not really doing anything for anyone, you know? Right. So you're talking about companies, how they need to go out and contact and meet people all the time. But if, they, if they're not good at meeting with people, it's probably negative for them, isn't it? No. Because you can, you can hire someone to do that for you. When you think about, uh, what's his name, Steve Wozniak? Mm -hmm. Right? If, if he... He was the guy who worked with Jobs, right? Yeah. So, so if he didn't meet Jobs, he would never have been this successful, ever. Right. It would not happen. And is, it, is he bad because of that? No. He's just good at what he does. Jobs is good at what he did. So you have to combine that. And that's what a lot of people... For example, I told you, the first person I'm going to hire is a secretary. Is a person that's going to do the things that I don't need to do, but that have to get done. Right. And... A lot of people wait way too long for someone to communicate their idea. And what I highly suggest is if you can't, no wait, if you can afford it, hire someone for your own company where you think that you can work with them for a long time. But even if you are only, for example, you, you work alone, mm -hmm. like having someone do the shit you don't want to do is so valuable, man. Like I realized it myself. It's right. sick. Yeah, I, I want to so, get someone. Well, I guess I'm hiring you to do all like my marketing and yeah, other dude, shit. Yeah, dude, I'm do. I'm hired already. It's done. <laughs> I can't stand that stuff. Um, no, for sure. Did you, you get? So, what about you? We were talking about me all the time. But what What about you? When what situation are you right now? How um, far are we do we get? We have the website. That's good. Yeah. So I fixed the website. Have an appointment to fix that as well on Monday. I'm having my first session with a writing coach. So I'm nice. That, um, I'm writing this blog post on how to listen and how to <laughs> actually help people. And it's, it's really interesting and really fucking hard because it's not something I ever talked about. But as I write more and more about it, it's, it's such like an interesting skill. Um, I'm going to start it off with this story that... This thing I've seen on Facebook. It was actually really terrible and really funny at the same time. Um, okay. Just because my humor it makes it funny. Um, it wasn't really funny, but it was funny to an extent. So this guy responds to a post on Facebook about this guy wanting to commit suicide. And he comes at him with like all this positivity and like advice on what to do. And the other guy who made the post, gets angry at him, starts laughing out, gets pissed, like, fuck you, man. <laughs> okay. And then whatever happens afterwards, like, the conversation ends with the guy who was initially trying to help, his last post was, yeah, you do suck, maybe you should kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, like, terrible and funny at the same time, because he, like, starts off yeah. like that. And, like, this problem plays out, like, millions of times a day, I feel like. Like, the person yeah. just wanting to help and bring, like, positivity, positive energy, and the other person getting pissed. And the other guy being like, hey, yes. I'm just trying to help. What the fuck's going on? And neither yeah. of them realize that they're just both going at it wrong. Like, completely wrong. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, trying to, like, break that down and talk about that, I think, is really important and really interesting. One thing that I love that Gary said in a video, and he said it a million times already, 
Um, help is not useful without context, mm -hmm. right? And, and I thought about that a lot. And he, what he said is basically, when, when someone sends me like a, a tweet or whatever, I'm, I'm trying to help, but I realize that I can only really best help you if you give me some context. So that's why, for example, he talks to every single employee. Personally, um, wait, let me interrupt wants... you and go back before I forget. So I'm going to forget. Right. That was important. Sure. Why do you think that that guy got angry? And why do you think that could have been predicted? That he got angry? When the guy was trying to just help him, why do you think he got angry and pissed off? Well, I, I would assume he felt either misunderstood because, like, the other guy didn't even know the real problem, mm -hmm. I assume. So right. he didn't even know the real problem. So he didn't dig deep into that one problem and help there. And the other guy that got felt offended felt misunderstood. That's what I think mm. happened. I think, likely. I think he felt misunderstood and felt like that guy was trying to be superior to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there's a real... There's a real risk of like just pissing off the other person because it makes them feel inferior or like you feel superior to them when you give advice. Correct. And, yes. Uh, yeah, so I don't, I think that was just, I was watching it unfold, I'm like, this shit isn't going to go down well. Like, just when he was posting, mm -hmm. like, positive stuff, and and it just didn't at all. Could you have prevented it somehow? Um, I don't think I could have prevented it. Um, what I did do was be like, hey, I'm not trying to help you out, like, let's just, let's just talk, and I just want to, like, understand what's going on. And all I did was ask him questions, and wanted to know what he's tried and what he did to help himself and what why it didn't work and I provided like some things or some ideas or whatever but in a very careful way and I never gave advice the whole time but he ended the thing which is like hey thanks a lot this was helpful just needed someone to talk to right. about these things and to be understood yeah I totally get it totally 100% get it. it it makes so much sense and I mean, I talk about other people all the time. This is just how I think. And, um, you know, when, when I, I saw this thing from Tony Robbins, I'm not your guru. Yeah. Have you seen it? The Netflix so, thing? Huh? Is it Netflix, the, yeah. Yeah, I've seen mm -hmm. it. It was good. It's so good. And when you think about what he's doing all the time, he's never giving advice before he understands the situation. He doesn't even say stuff like, oh, but you have such an amazing life. He, he's always saying st things like, you know, what do you like about your life? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, no, like, what are, like, two positive things about your life? Or so something like that. But he never says, oh, but your life is so good. Life is so awesome. You can meet people, blah, blah, blah. That's what a lot of people do, and it's bullshit. And, uh, by the way, it's something that I did even a year ago, even half a year ago. I, I was doing it all the time. And I realized... That's the most selfish, most stupid thing you could ever do. It's right. just so bad. And the only the only reason it works sometimes is that people respect you so much or you are so much better in your results than others. Right. You earn that, that sometimes, superiority. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because they're like sitting at home. They're like, oh, man, I'm shit. This guy gets it. So maybe I'll just do whatever you say. And, and by the way, do you remember? That's exactly what I told you people should do like a year ago or two. I just said, you know, just hire a coach and then just do everything that person says. Right. It's it's not wrong, but it's not right for everybody. Right. Um, yeah, so. What I thought was great about the Tony Robbins was, like, that young girl who wanted to focus on her health. Remember, like, yes. she was talking about her diet? Yes. The, f the first one, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And how quickly he got to, like, I mean, maybe that was or wasn't. It seemed like that was the root of a problem, like her dad. Like, how quickly he got it from what she thought she wanted to what she actually wanted. Yeah. And the change is able to affect. Like, I mean, yes. that's what I try to do, but it takes me like 30 fucking minutes, 40 minutes. And right. he just did it in like 30 seconds, you know? Yeah, it's sick. It's yeah. so sick. Yeah. And this is this is basically exactly... But, but you know what I think it is? He did, I think, he did exactly what I'm doing right now. He's brainstorming on like the perfect situation, like the thing, the what he thinks is the perfect situation mm -hmm. and where all the problem, where the, all the problems come from. Yeah. And when he hears something, he knows already where 
roughly it is. You know, like when he hears that problem, he knows roughly where it is. And then what he just needs is the link. Right. Now he just needs that one link to where he can pull it through towards. So he understands, okay, so this is the first link, what she's telling me. And what comes behind has to be something around parents, her youth, or something like that. You know, and he just understands that. And when you understand how it should work perfectly, you can go from there and then work on all the other things, I think. Yeah, I thought it was insane. Like, as someone who's tried it, it just it takes me so long to get there. Yeah, he's um, great. His use of emotion is really interesting. Like, so what, when I do life coaching, and I'm not a pro, not Tony Robbins, but it's more like logical and thinking and like tangible yeah. stuff like decision making. He'll just, like, he'll just use emotion. Like, the guy with the lion roar, you know? Like, that the yeah. guy and his girlfriend. Like, the story yeah. of the lion and the guy just roars afterwards. So good. So good. Wow, that was so good. Yeah. Um, the, <laughs> the one who, that girl who got the life coaching, like, 50000 all the money donated. Mm -hmm. The way he, he made her, like, look into everyone's eyes and, like, see who, who she could trust or something like that, like. It yeah. creates these like emotionally powerful situations, and it's it's really interesting because it it looks really powerful. And it's mm -hmm. not something I'd ever do personally, but it's really cool. Like uh, one thing that that's really funny, I've been starting to make those videos, right? Mm -hmm. And I uploaded one actually yesterday, the first one. And oh, you did. So it's funny. I was wait, looking wait, wait. at these videos. Wait, wait. Is this for easy oh, simplify? Oh, yeah, on YouTube. The first series started yesterday. It's uh, five minutes on traveling back in time. You know, three tips that I would give myself. But okay. I'm, I'm really excited about the Saturday Where I, series. Where can I find it? Man, everywhere, dude. Like uh, When you go on Facebook, I have it there. When you go on Instagram, I have it there. When you go on YouTube and you search for Easy Simplify, I have it there. I'm gonna, hold on. Hold on. I just want to see your page really quick. So I yeah, you just, you just go on YouTube, type yeah. in Easy Simplify, and the first thing was my name. No, it's not. It's not your Shit. name. It's, no, uh, it is. E easy Simplify. I typed in Easy Simplify. It's not there. What? I typed in Easy Simplify, too, the first thing. Oh, maybe because it's me. Yeah, it's you. <laughs> Wait, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll send you the link. Okay. <laughs> All right, so go ahead with what you're saying. Sorry. So, okay, so I was uh, taking a look at the videos, right? And I was like, this is not me. I don't, I don't like this. This is not me. I don't, I don't like the guy who's talking. Right. Um, I don't like the way he's talking. And so, you know, I made another video. It's like and that was, uh, fake energy problem. Like, you want to show, like, energy and, like, be positive, yeah. but it, like, just comes off super inauthentic. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and then I tried to be... Like the business videos, right? And they were very instructional and very cold. Right. And it's just not me. You know, I, I'm, right. I'm a guy, like, I jump around. I, I, I'm very energetic. And so I was like, okay, I have to do the video again. I have, like, probably 20 videos that I'm going to dump. They're just horrible. They're probably exactly as good as the, the last one in terms of the content. Mm -hmm. But I just don't like the guy talking. Right. So... And I don't. I, and here's another thing. I hated the camera. The camera quality was shit. It's probably good because I'm just starting out. It's not terrible, um, but I just didn't like it. So I thought, okay, I need a camera, and I like I need a real good camera, and I need to be me. Right. And so I started to do new videos, and I love them. Yeah. And it's it's just a funny feeling of when you when you feel like something is not right, but it's not like it's not perfect because it's never going to be perfect. But if it's not, like, you don't feel this is the right thing to do, you shouldn't do it. So, I don't even know how I came here, but... Um, well, wait, I got so, after interrupt, have you seen Elliot Hulse's, like, earlier videos, like, his first videos? No. Oh, no. man, it's so weak and, like, fake, and it's just, like, you can see his, like, maturity to becoming, like, as great as he is at it. Like, I watched this, oh, really? one of his first videos yesterday. And it was just okay. completely off. Like, I think you'd find it inspiring. 
just how bad he was at the start. You didn't like it? Okay. I, I mean, I don't know. Like, But, yeah, I think we were talking about, you know, faking and all that. Like, I think, like, seriously, you should go for what you think is right. And then everybody has to know what you're doing. And if you do not, like, talk to everybody about what you're doing. And this, Daryl, this is something I learned seven, eight years ago. And I didn't understand. But if you are talking to someone and you feel weird about telling them what you're doing, then it's not the right thing for you. And it's, it's, it's 100% true. And a lot of people, like maybe in like five years, you and me will be very well known, <laughs> hopefully, you know. And someone will watch this video. Um, so first of all, congrats if you went through the 40 minutes already. <laughs> second thing is, just this one when you talk to someone and they're not correct are doing it, it, it like you will regret it it will take a year probably to find out and you like seriously I regret so much the, the other things that I said and, and the, that now I know was not I can't hear you you're breaking up oh sorry yeah can you hear me now because I have to go anyway yeah can you hear me yeah well, I can hear you okay. yeah I have I, I have to go anyway. All right, dude. Some, some stuff. All right, dude. Yeah, thanks for the talk. It was fun. And uh, yeah, keep me updated on um, you know what you're going to do, and whenever you need me, just uh, hit me up. Right. I'm here. See you. Okay. Bye. See you later. Bye.